So, let's start. Number 10, rabies. The real zombie virus. If Hollywood ever wanted a real-life zombie virus, rabies has already written the script. This ancient disease doesn't kill you immediately, it rewires you into a monster before it kills you. It usually starts with a small bite from an infected dog, bat, or raccoon. Nothing dramatic, just a scratch you might shrug off. Weeks later, though, the virus has crawled silently through your nervous system, inching toward your brain, and that's when the horror begins. Victims develop paranoia, hallucinations, and uncontrollable aggression. They drool and snap at people. They foam at the mouth and, in extreme cases, lash out with teeth like wild animals. If that sounds like a B-movie zombie, that's because rabies basically inspired the idea. Then comes hydrophobia, not fear of water, but violent throat spasms that make drinking impossible. Imagine being desperately thirsty, staring at a glass of water, and being physically unable to swallow. In the Middle Ages, rabies victims were believed to be possessed. Villages locked them in barns until they died, and travelers avoided places with rabid dogs like cursed ground. Fast forward to today, and rabies still kills around 60,000 people every year, mostly in Asia and Africa. And bats are especially dangerous. Their bites are so tiny you might not even notice you've been infected until it's too late. The part that makes rabies truly terrifying is its fatality rate. Once symptoms show, it's nearly 100% deadly. Only a handful of survivors exist, usually after extreme medical intervention. The only way to survive is by getting the vaccine before symptoms start. After that, game over. Zombies may not be real, but rabies makes you wonder how far off the idea really is. Number 9. The Bubonic Plague, the Black Death that Never Left. The bubonic plague, or black death, is the disease that needs no introduction. It's the medieval nightmare that wiped out up to half of Europe's population in the 14th century. And it killed horribly. Victims developed grotesque swollen lumps called buboes, usually in the armpits or groin. Fevers spiked, coughing turned bloody, and death often came within days. Cities were gutted, families wiped out, and priests couldn't bury bodies fast enough. People at the time had no idea what caused it. Some thought God was punishing humanity, others blamed bad air so they lit fires and carried flowers to ward it off. The most tragic scapegoats were Jewish communities who were massacred across Europe by mobs convinced they had poisoned wells. Meanwhile, plague doctors wore their iconic bird masks stuffed with herbs, not because they worked, but because they thought nice smells blocked disease. Here's the creepy twist. The plague never actually went away. The bacteria Yersinia pestis still exists today, lurking in rodents like prairie dogs in the US and marmots in Asia. Every year, hundreds of human cases are reported worldwide. Yes, in the 21st century. And while antibiotics make it treatable now, the pneumonic version can still spread directly between people and kill within 24 hours if untreated. So while the Black Death feels like a medieval chapter that's long closed, it's really more like a horror villain lying low, waiting for the right moment to make a comeback. Number 8. Necrotizing fasciitis, the flesh-eating bacteria. Forget movie monsters, necrotizing fasciitis, also called flesh-eating disease, is the real thing. And it doesn't need claws or fangs to ruin your life. It often begins innocently with a cut, scrape, or bug bite. The wound looks harmless, but the pain is far worse than it should be. That's the first warning, something under the skin is devouring you alive. Within hours, skin turns red and blistered, then black as tissue dies. Doctors race to amputate limbs just to stop the spread. Even then, survival isn't guaranteed. Death rates hover around 25 to 30 percent. What makes it worse is that the culprits are often ordinary bacteria like Streptococcus pyogenes the same bug behind strep throat, but in rare cases they mutate into a rampaging flesh eater. History is littered with outbreaks. Soldiers in the Civil War lost limbs not to bullets but to infection spreading through filthy camp wounds. Today, cases still happen after swimming with cuts or even gardening injuries. One Florida man developed it after a simple swim. A British woman nearly died after a gardening scrape. Victims can go from healthy to fighting for their life in under 48 hours. There's no horror movie villain scarier than this because it's invisible, unstoppable once it starts, and real. 
Unlike zombies or vampires, necrotizing fasciitis doesn't need special effects. It just needs one unlucky cut. Number seven, leprosy, the living death. Leprosy, also called Hansen's disease, has haunted humanity for millennia. In the Bible, it's practically shorthand for cursed. Ancient people believed lepers were unclean, cursed by the gods, or even already dead in some spiritual sense. Victims were exiled to leper colonies, forced to ring bells to warn others of their approach, and often cut off from society entirely. But here's the twist. Leprosy doesn't rot your flesh away overnight. Instead, the bacteria Mycobacterium leprae attacks nerves causing numbness. Without pain signals, victims injure themselves without noticing burns, cuts, or infections. Over time, the damage leads to disfigurement, clawed hands, collapsed noses, missing fingers, and toes. To ancient eyes, this slow transformation looked like a person literally decaying while alive. The stigma was worse than the disease itself. Lepers weren't just sick, they were treated like monsters. In medieval Europe, some were even declared legally dead, their property seized, families abandoned them, cities banished them, and churches forced them into isolation. Here's the unsettling part. Leprosy still exists. Around 200,000 new cases are reported each year, mostly in Asia, Africa, and South America. Antibiotics can cure it now, but the centuries of stigma remain. The fact that a disease so deeply woven into our culture still lingers today makes it one of the scariest nightmares. Number six, smallpox, humanity's deadliest foe. Smallpox is the heavyweight champion of history's killer diseases. For centuries, it rampaged across the globe, leaving behind mountains of corpses and survivors scarred for life. Unlike many diseases, smallpox did more than just kill, it disfigured. Survivors were left with pitted scars across their faces, often blind, sometimes crippled. Entire dynasties collapsed under its shadow. At its peak, smallpox killed around 30% of those infected. Children were especially vulnerable. The virus spread easily, carried by a cough, a touch, or even contaminated clothing. And when it arrived in the Americas with European colonizers, it decimated indigenous populations, wiping out whole cultures for centuries. Doctors had no cure. People tried desperate methods like variolation, deliberately infecting themselves with mild cases in hopes of surviving. It sometimes worked and sometimes just spread the disease faster. It wasn't until Edward Jenner invented the first vaccine in 1796 using cowpox that humanity finally gained a weapon against it. In 1980, smallpox was officially declared eradicated, the first human disease to be wiped out. But samples still exist in labs in the US and Russia, leading to constant debate. What if it escapes, or worse, gets used as a bioweapon? The idea that the deadliest virus in history still sits in freezers is enough to keep smallpox high on the scariest list. Number five, Ebola, bleeding out from the inside. If rabies is the zombie virus, then Ebola is the closest thing to a real-life apocalypse plague. First identified in the 1970s along the Ebola River in what is now the Democratic Republic of Congo, this virus showed up and made the world collectively shiver. Patients suffer fever, vomiting, diarrhea, and then, in some cases, bleed from their eyes, ears, and literally every possible hole in their body. Imagine sneezing and having it look like a crime scene. What makes Ebola terrifying isn't just the gore factor, it's how quickly it kills. In some outbreaks, up to 90% of infected people died, often within days. Whole villages were wiped out before the outside world even realized what was happening. During the West African outbreak of 2014 to 2016, the fear wasn't just in Africa. Airports around the world started screening passengers, governments panicked, and suddenly everyone realized how fragile our defenses against new plagues really are. Historically, Ebola also sparked some of the creepiest medical stories ever. Doctors in protective moon suits would walk into villages looking like aliens to carry away patients. Families were forced to abandon sick loved ones and cultural burial practices such as washing bodies before funerals often spread the virus faster because corpses remained contagious. In places where family meant everything, people had to choose between tradition and survival. Today, 
Experimental vaccines and treatments exist, but Ebola hasn't gone away. Outbreaks still pop up in Africa, sometimes killing dozens or hundreds before containment. And with modern air travel, it doesn't take much imagination to picture it hopping onto a plane and starting a chain reaction. Ebola serves as a stark reminder of how thin the line is between normal life and absolute chaos. Number four, prion diseases, when your brain eats itself. If there's one disease that feels like a horror movie written by David Lynch, it's prion diseases. They're caused not by bacteria, not by viruses, but by misfolded proteins. Imagine one tiny mistake in the way your body folds its proteins and suddenly your brain starts rotting from the inside out. That's not science fiction, that's what prions do. The most infamous version is Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, sometimes called the human mad cow disease. Victims start with memory lapses and clumsy movements, then rapidly spiral into dementia, hallucinations, and complete neurological collapse. Death usually follows within a year. There's no cure, no treatment, and no slowing it down. History has its share of unsettling prion stories. Among the four people of Papua New Guinea, a prion disease called Kuru spread through ritual cannibalism, specifically eating the brains of the dead. It caused uncontrollable laughing fits, tremors, and ultimately death. Western doctors called it the Laughing Death, which sounds like the world's worst comic book villain. Once the practice of brain eating stopped, the disease faded, but the sheer fact that eating grandma's remains at dinner could lead to mass brain rot is nightmare fuel. The scariest thing about prions is their durability. They aren't killed by boiling, disinfectants, or even radiation. They just persist, like tiny, indestructible seeds of madness. If viruses are wolves and bacteria are sharks, prions are like alien nanobots, silent, unstoppable, and fundamentally misunderstood. Science still doesn't fully grasp them, which makes them feel less like biology and more like cosmic horror. Number three, drug-resistant tuberculosis, the disease that refuses to die. Tuberculosis, or TB, has been humanity's shadow companion for centuries. In the 1800s, it was called consumption because victims wasted away with sunken cheeks and bloody coughs. It killed poets, artists, and ordinary families, and filled sanatoriums across Europe and America. Back then, the cure was basically go live in the mountains, breathe fresh air, and hope you don't die. Spoiler, most people still died. Then came antibiotics in the 20th century, and TB finally seemed defeated. But here's the plot twist. TB is back, and it's more dangerous than ever. Thanks to the misuse of antibiotics, drug-resistant strains have evolved. Some resistant to one or two drugs, others resistant to virtually everything we have. Doctors call it XDRTB, extensively drug-resistant, which sounds less like a disease and more like a final boss in a video game. The horror of TB is in its persistence. It doesn't kill quickly, it lingers, sometimes for years as the bacteria eat away at your lungs. Victims cough up blood, lose weight, and suffocate slowly. In crowded cities, it spreads easily, hitching a ride on every cough and sneeze. Even today, TB kills over a million people each year, more than HIV, more than malaria, more than Ebola could ever dream of. What makes drug-resistant TB especially terrifying is how easily it could spiral out of control. Imagine a disease as contagious as the flu, but with the deadliness of untreated cancer and a growing resistance to medicine. For a species that likes to think it has conquered infectious disease, TB is proof that sometimes the monster just changes masks. Number two, polio, the crippler that won't quit. Polio is the boogeyman of the 20th century. Before vaccines, it struck seemingly at random, often targeting children. One day, you were running in the yard, and the next day, you woke up paralyzed. In severe cases, victims couldn't even breathe on their own and had to live inside iron lungs, giant coffin-like machines that pumped air in and out of their bodies. The disease sparked sheer terror in mid-century America. Pools were shut down, movie theaters emptied, and parents refused to let kids play outside during summer outbreaks. It was unpredictable, invisible, and devastating. The only silver lining was the incredible race for a vaccine. Jonas Salk became a hero when his vaccine was rolled out in 1955, followed by Albert Sabin's oral vaccine. Polio cases plummeted and the world cheered, but here's the catch. Polio isn't gone. 
While it's close to eradication, outbreaks still flare in parts of Afghanistan and Pakistan, and rare vaccine-derived strains sometimes reappear. As long as even a handful of cases exist, the virus has the potential to roar back. The thought of polio resurging in a world where iron lungs would feel like ancient relics is enough to keep epidemiologists awake at night. Diseases don't just vanish because we want them to, they lurk, they wait, and sometimes they make comebacks. Number one, Marburg virus, Ebola's deadlier cousin. If Ebola is the rock star of hemorrhagic fevers, Marburg is its even scarier sibling that never got the same PR team. First discovered in Germany in 1967 when lab workers got infected by African monkeys, Marburg makes Ebola look almost merciful. Death rates in some outbreaks have hit 88%. Symptoms, fever, muscle pain, delirium, and then the spectacular finale, organ failure, internal bleeding, and death within a week. The horror of Marburg lies in its unpredictability. Outbreaks are rare, but when they happen, they're catastrophic. Villages in Uganda or Angola have been reduced to ghost towns practically overnight. Corpses had to be buried by workers in full hazmat gear while terrified communities burned homes to stop the spread. Marburg doesn't spread as easily as the flu, but it doesn't have to. With such a high fatality rate and no reliable treatment, even a handful of cases is enough to cause global panic. And like Ebola, it comes from bats. Yes, bats again, the same flying mammals that seem to be nature's favorite biological weapon factory. The scariest part? We still don't fully know where Marburg hides between outbreaks. It could be lurking in caves, animals, or somewhere we haven't looked yet. The idea that a virus capable of wiping out nearly 9 out of 10 people it touches is just chilling quietly in the shadows is the stuff of nightmares. Thank you for watching and sticking till the end. We've got plenty more videos coming in the future. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss them. See you in the next one.